you know, since November, we can't have an episode without talking uh, about AI. And yes. Microsoft uh, came out with a GA uh, for uh, one product, and I believe introduced uh, another. Why don't you dive into that? Yeah, so I'll talk a little bit about Sales Copilot and AIM, and it's two different things. It was a bad Chiron by me, but it's two different things for those of you that are looking at the pod. Um, or is it Chiron? I have no idea. Okay. I, it's Chicago, not Ch Chicago. Chicago? You know? It's Chicago? Yeah. All right, just, just checking. So, look, so if you haven't been following what Microsoft is doing, I mean, what it's done since its investment in, in, AI, in, in open AI has been layering in generative capabilities across its entire business portfolio. There seems to be an announcement almost every week that it's, you know, it goes from dynamics over to uh, to uh, teams to uh, windows and uh, M365 and office. Well, this week at Inspire, the company zeroed in on its sales its co pilot, which is, you know, part of its dynamics 365 uh, and CRM solution. And really, it's a set of tools that, you know, sits on top of um, so that, you know, just for background, the, the, the co pilot. Basically, it sits across the uh, suite of productivity and collaboration apps. The idea is this is this is the generative capability, automate tasks, create content, uh, using uh, being able to analyze data, design PowerPoints. Some of you have probably seen this. I'm dying to try it. I want to build a PowerPoint in two minutes, um, and then I want to fire myself. Pat, my, my goal to replace myself. You hear this? It's, it's another one. I mean, faster, faster. whether it's videos, whether it's presentations, yeah. Research reports. You know, and they're coming to something like $30 a month per user for all this. Seems seems like it could work. Um, but it's not yet broadly available. So about 600 global enterprise customers are able to use this. But basically what the, you know, the sales co-pilot is and what they're really focusing in on now is how do you improve that end-to-end -end sales experience in CRM? You know? generating follow-up emails, creating initial introductions, putting that into the system, um, being able to use customization in text, uh, being able to blend uh, private uh, enterprise data with public large language models to create more compelling real-time presentations that can be used on PowerPoint, in sales, uh, being able to put together a, a price quote and do these things in an almost automated way and, the, and you start to see the way this integrates, right? You start to see, oh, a Teams meeting. I talked to a customer in that meeting. We talked about what the proposal would be, being able to extract that and then instantly drop it into the Dynamics 365 Sales Copilot. Sales Copilot then creates a PowerPoint presentation with the proposal, creates a written proposal, drops it into the CRM, puts it into a different stage, depending on where it's been delivered, and then out it goes, trackable, automatic updates. You can schedule follow-on emails to come out of this thing. That's what they're really doing with Sales Copilot. It's a pretty compelling, um, you know, set of capabilities and tools that every company on the planet will want. They're doing a similar service co-pilot, which can do things like automating chatbots, uh, sending messages back and forth, being able to answer questions, tapping into ERP and CRM to be able to get real-time data. Where's my delivery? Well, you know, where's my service ticket? I need a technical support agent. My product's not working. Things like that. So you're seeing it in sales. You're seeing it in service. This is a big focus for. Uh, for Microsoft right now. Now, having said that, I'm going to be really clear. This is a big focus of every company that's doing CRM and ERP solutions. Um, you know, if it's CX companies like Zendesk, if it's Salesforce, uh, you know, their CRM and service cloud, uh, they launched a fairly significant AI capability. If it's going to be, you know, you're going to see some of this in business AI. We talked about SAP. You're going to see some of this in NetSuite and in the tools in Oracle. But really, the question isn't going to be if a company does this. The expectation is every technology company that has an enterprise software suite is going to do this. The question is, one, is for each company, it's about, A, protecting your moat, meaning having it be the customers you have feel that the AI tools that are being made available are going to be good enough that you don't need to consider a different AI tool and to, to you know, take your business elsewhere. The second thing is then going to be it's going to be competing on the quality. Pat, we saw Google. Also in workspaces, introduced their generational uh, generative AI capabilities to do PowerPoints, to do sales proposals. Now, Google doesn't have a CRM per se, but you could start to see how, well, you know, Salesforce doesn't really have an office unless you consider Quip, 
you know, that. And I would say it's not. Um, but also, and you see, well, could a Salesforce and Google pair up to do something that looks a lot like what Microsoft's doing? So that's kind of going to be the interesting thing to watch. Is there going to be the debate on how that all comes together? Um, I'm going to quickly talk here about um, AIM because the company also did come up with, uh, you know, what's called Accelerate, Innovate, Move. It's a new program, you know, that the company put out to help businesses get into the cloud. And the reason they're doing that is because until companies move into the cloud, they can't take advantage of the Dynamics 365 Copilot. So AIM is a migration tool. And it is a set, it's not a, just a tool, it's a tool and set of services capabilities that help people move more quickly from prem or from traditional Dynamics solutions into the cloud. And so all the co-pilot capabilities, just to be quick, are required that you're running in the cloud. So seeing customers move from prem to cloud so they can gain access to these features is gonna be something that's important. So this is kind of a new thing, Pat. My big hope and uh, consideration is historically migration offerings from companies have felt like this is really hard. So we're building programs and tools to make it easier. What I'm hoping Microsoft is really thinking about is migration to, to our cloud is easier than others. And we're building a program to make it even easier. And I'm, I'm saying this not cynically, but Pat, when you hear migration program, don't you, doesn't it kind of just make your a hair in the back of your neck stand up. You're like, ooh, that's stressful. Well, it's high risk. It's stressful. It takes incremental people. Um, but I got to tell you, it's it's just as much work to bring in a new package. I mean, yep, absolutely. So both been through that. Yeah. So I'll close this one out real quickly, Pat. Um, you, you sure know, you don't want? More. You sure you don't want to talk another ten minutes, Dan? No. Right, let's keep going. Right, let me talk about enterprise bank. No, I'm kidding. I do want to. I want you to talk about enterprise search, even though I want to. But I I, I want to leave a little oxygen on this one. No, I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, I wasn't even briefed by Microsoft on sales co-pilot uh, aim. So I'm going to stick uh, to what I was briefed on. And uh, I wrote a Forbes article along with uh, Melody Brew. It's up on Forbes.com. You can check it out. But uh, listen, this is another one of these. This capability had been announced previously. And this one is in GA. This one is in preview. Okay, now. Like Daniel, I want this thing now. I want to start using it, mistakes uh, and all. But I, I did feel like it, it was important to, to pull some things out. Initially, when Microsoft talked about these capabilities, they, they were, uh, weren't were as clear as I thought they needed to be uh, related to, we are going to use, if you want, enterprise data to make the experience better. And what I mean by better is is accurate, right? Because if you look at uh, Open A uh, Open AI, um, it's the brain, and you know it's been tested on called World Data, which is the the public internet, uh, and then uh, Microsoft uh, applies it, its own filter to it, uh, mostly for security and recency, uh, called I believe it's called Andromeda. Uh, and then what you do for enterprises is you do uh, prompt engineering at scale, okay? You're not retraining the entire model. Again, that would cost, you know, $100 million. What you're doing is, is you are putting uh, in mass, and by the way, I think Salesforce does a great job uh, explaining this, uh, to be able to keep your data secure uh, in a in a SaaS uh, uh, environment, and some some of the new stuff that came out was uh, that that each one of the responses in the prompts when you go to Microsoft Bing Search uh, is is it is it tells you the source of the data. It also tells you it's internal data only, like only you can see that. Uh, it's not the first time Microsoft has done this. If you use Bing search uh, many times like I do uh, and you connect your Azure AD and your corporate, it will tell you you're the only one to see this. Google does the same thing with Workspace uh, when you do uh, a, a search and it sprinkles in your, your enterprise data if, if you've uh, uploaded that. So I, I really, really do uh, appreciate that because a system like this has to provide trust, okay? And that's trust, not just in the uh, trust, is it is it giving me garbage 
uh, back, uh, which is, is obviously important, but, but really having trust in uh, where it came from. And, you know, as we like to say, sometimes uh, trust and verify uh, labeling these links the results with where it pulled the data from will uh, increase that trust over time. Now, long term, I don't know if you're going to need that. Like once people get trust, those links just might uh, go away. Now, you still have to have that on the public, uh, sorry, the consumer side, because you, you need to send links back to uh, advertisers and and stuff like that. But it is uh, very, uh, very smart in how they uh, introduced uh, the, this AI. When it does come to trust, I mean, people trust Microsoft. If you're using Office 365, if you're using Microsoft 365, if you're using Dynamics 365, you basically are entrusting Microsoft already uh, with, uh, with, with your data. And yes, generative AI is a little bit different than machine learning and deep learning and analytics, but you are still exporting your uh, uh, data out there. Uh, there is, you know, th the one nuance um, with generative AI is that it, imp it tries to improve itself over time, right? It's this living organism, it's this living brain. And, you know, Microsoft is very clear that it's not gonna use data that it trained off your corporate data uh, to make the overall uh, Borg, right? That's available to everybody else uh, smarter, okay? And that's a, you know, it's gonna take a while for enterprises to get, uh, to, to get comfortable uh, with that. Daniel, like you, give me this now, okay? I wanna take my Word documents and, and turn them into presentations. I wanna take my PowerPoint and turn them into Word documents. Just, just give me that now, uh, would you? Come on, Microsoft. I'm not an E5 licensee, but, but uh, I sure would like to, uh, I sure would like to uh, 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 try this out. So check out the Forbes article from uh, Melody and I.